Good morning and welcome to our special Earth Day webcast with Polar Bears International. Today we are celebrating some fabulous facts and have a spotlight on science across the Arctic, looking at what's going on with polar bears right now. I'm joined by my colleague BJ Kirschhofer, and we're going to kick you guys off with some facts in just a minute. Uh, but first I wanted to let you know that we want your questions. So if you have questions about anything we're talking about today, please let us know. You should have a chat window if you're watching it on our website. There's a chat window right below where you should see us. Or if you're watching this on Facebook, please feel free to put your questions in the Facebook chat. We do have moderators standing by and watching, ready to answer or pass your questions to us. So we're extra excited for Earth Day tomorrow because we are premiering on Disney Plus a polar bear movie made by Disney. So we are uh, supporting the work with, we've gonna have a web page. We're gonna have lots of great stuff to talk about this. There's polar bear. And right at the end of our webcast today, we're gonna share the trailer. So it's just a good reason to celebrate polar bears even a little bit extra than we usually do. So let's get right into it. Polar bears are an amazing animal. We love them. Yes, they're cute but there's so many other cool things about them and bj i'm gonna let you kick it off so bj is our staff member in montana he's our director of field operations he makes sure our research happens he does some of the coolest stuff in the arctic that i've ever seen and he of course loves polar bears too so bj maybe you can kick us off with some of your a favorite fact or two about polar bears Sure. So happy to be here. Happy Earth Day. Uh, maybe we'll just start right at the top with Ursus maritimus is the scientific name for bears, which means marine bear. These are bears that if the sea ice is in great condition, they would just prefer to spend their entire life cycle on top of sea ice. They want to be out where it's cold, it's snowy, and they can catch their favorite food seals. And that place is on top of the frozen ocean on sea ice. I think it's pretty cool that of all the eight bear species we have on a planet, the polar bear really is the only ocean bear. All the other bears make their living on land, but polar bears truly do need that Arctic sea ice to make their living. And that's because of exactly what BJ said, seals. And one of my favorite facts about polar bears is that they're considered the most carnivorous bear of all the eight bear species. We even like to call them lipovores, which means fat eaters, because when they're eating seals, it's really the blubber they're going for. Polar bears need that blubber because only blubber provides enough energy to power the biggest bear on the planet, which is my next favorite fact. But polar bears really depend on seals. They can't live on land long term. They need that sea ice that we mentioned, and they need seals. They are not like a brown bear or a black bear or a panda bear that can make their living on land. So BJ, maybe you could talk a little bit about polar bear feet, why they're so cool. Polar bear feet are pretty cool. Uh, so, of course, you've got this huge animal. And just like all of us, when we want to move around, uh, we use our feet to get around. Polar bears, they don't only use, not only use their feet for movement, but they also use their feet for communication. So polar bears, as they're walking around on the snow and the ice out in this vast landscape, um, if they maybe want to find their friends or maybe want to find a mate, they can sniff the tracks of the bears uh, that have come for them in the snow and they can tell who's out there. Maybe they want to follow that bear that's walked before, or maybe they don't, maybe they want to stay away. So there's a lot going on with polar bear feet and polar bear tracks. And another cool fact related to their feet is that polar bears are the most mobile four-legged animal. So what that means is that if we think of elephants or lions or wolves, polar bears have the largest ranges that they roam. They can walk the farthest in a season compared to any other animal. So part of this is because their sea ice habitat is constantly shifting and moving and polar bears are always on the prowl for food. So they're not like grizzly bears that have this territory that they defend. Polar bears are always roaming and some of them can have massive, massive home ranges, almost the size of Texas, you know, half a million square kilometers, depending on where they live in the world. So we quickly covered five of our favorite facts in about five minutes. So let's go over them really quick. So polar bears are a marine bear, Ursus maritimus, like BJ said, they need sea, they need sea ice. And that's because they eat seals, because they're the most carnivorous bear on the planet. Very cool. They've got stinky, stinky feet, 
that help them track each other. And with their feet, they walk more than any other animal. And I briefly mentioned it, but they are the largest bear of all. So they're the most carnivorous, the biggest, and the most oceanic bear of all. So these are all very, very cool facts about polar bears. One, it's just some of the many reasons we like them and think they're really cool. And because we love them so much, we want to see them roaming the Arctic for generations to come. And so at Polar Bears International, we are really dedicated to talking about polar bears, to educating people, and also to researching them. And ultimately, all of this is for their conservation. And we want to help people get inspired to help us help polar bears. So we've got a short video here that helps tell you how you can get involved and how you can help us help polar bears. The key to getting the climate back to functioning the way it should and to preserving a future for polar bears across the Arctic is to move away from using fossil fuels for energy altogether. The most important thing we can do is vote with the climate in mind to let our leaders know we support a swift transition to renewable energy sources. In the meantime, we can directly participate in and learn more about our local and regional renewable energy options. We can all make a difference outside our own households by influencing where our energy comes from. Because together, we can make sure that polar bears roam the Arctic sea ice for generations to come. So if you're a kid watching from home, there's still a lot of things you can do. And one of the best things you can do is talk about it. When we talk about polar bears and what we learn and when we ask questions, we really do help make a change in society, making sure that our future is protected for polar bears and for us too, just making a cleaner planet for all of us. So while we are working on protecting polar bears and while we're working on climate change and solving it with the solutions we have in hand, we're also learning more about polar bears. Polar bears are difficult to study. You can imagine they live up in the high Arctic on sea ice, a dangerous habitat. It's freezing cold. It's expensive for us to get there and they generally are in pretty remote areas. But we do have researchers that go out and help teach us more about polar bears because the more we know, the better we can help them, the more we can protect them. So we're gonna go to a couple scientists who are on location in different areas in the Arctic doing polar bear research. First, we're gonna throw it over to one of our research associates, Joanna Suli in Svalbard, Norway. We work with Joanna on multiple research projects. Hi, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, everyone. Hi, um, well, I'm at the moment in Svalbard and that's, um, archipelago uh, sitting far north from Norway, so Europe, and it's really sitting on the edge of uh, sea ice that covers the Arctic Ocean um, during the winter and then um, year-round. So this is a special place and a good place to study bears and uh, nice to experience the environment that they experience daily. That's so neat. Yeah, that is a really, really special place for polar bears. What kind of research are you doing up there, Joanna? What kind of things are you learning about polar bears where you are? Yeah, well, one of the projects that uh, is ongoing um, right here is a maternity den project. So we are looking closely into maternity denning, this very crucial period of uh, bears' life when they are giving birth to their young and sitting in the harsh Arctic winter. They're sitting in the snow in a cave um, dug by themselves in the relative shelter. And then they are really trying to feed their young until the, their big enough to withstand this really harsh Arctic environment. So you can you know that bears are experiencing dramatic changes that we experience ourselves uh, all around the world. The climate is changing and those difficulties translate to their denning period, meaning that they are really having a, they are having a harder time to get getting enough energy to kind of store the fuel for this long period of fasting in the den and they're also having a harder time reaching seals when they are emerging from the den and um, the ice is not where it used to be 
So it sounds like there's a lot of very good reasons to be learning about polar bears in Svalbard, Norway. And actually BJ was just up there along with a couple of our other staff members and you guys were all working together on the Maternal Den project and students or teachers can find out more about that on our website. Very interesting work. What would you say your favorite thing about studying polar bears in Svalbard is? Um, Svalbard is very diverse. So it's um, a range of islands that has a lot of different small ecosystems. So it has fjords where mountains go very harshly down into the sea that freezes. Um, there are small shoals islands and the, there are those vast areas where the sea freezes and the bears can roam in. So um, also because of Svalbard's location, the west and east of the archipelago has very different um, conditions. So one part is warmer and one is a little colder. And also Svalbard is warming actually twice the rate in any other places in the Arctic. So it's very exciting and important to look at what's happening to bears in Svalbard and then take this into context of the circumpolar Arctic all around the pole. And uh, this can help us understand what challenges bears face as a species. So <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much for the work you are doing. It's incredibly important and incredibly challenging. And we're so happy to be working with researchers like you that are helping us learn more about these bears in different areas of the world. Very cool. And if you have any questions for Joanna, please do leave your questions under either your Facebook uh, video or where you're watching it on the polarbearsinternational.org website and we can shoot them over to her. She's uh, got an incredible amount of experience researching polar bears in a really brutal area. So fascinating to learn more from Joanna. Thank you so much. And now we're going to go to a different part of the world where polar bears live and where many uh, polar bears international staff have spent a lot of time, myself included. We're hopping over to Churchill, Manitoba in Canada on the shores of the Hudson Bay. And we are going to be talking to Nick Pilfold, who is there right now. See, there's Churchill on your screen there. Nick Pilfold's right, he's there right now getting ready to head out in the next couple of days to go look at polar bears. Hi, Nick, how's it going? Good. Hi, Lisa. Hi, BJ. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. What does it look like right there? What's the weather doing right now for you? Uh, well, right now it's actually clearing up, which is really good for us. Uh, we need to have nice blue skies and calm conditions uh, so that we can go out, fly around and find polar bears. So great. And so what are you guys doing uh, what, what are you studying about the polar bears there and how are you studying them? What's going on with your research right now? Yeah, so the Western Hudson Bay, this region is the most well-studied polar bear population in the entire world. So researchers have been here for about 40 years doing research almost every single year. And that has allowed us to learn so much about this species and the challenges that they're facing with climate change. And so we're here right now continuing that long-term research we're going to go out into the uh, sea ice environment. We're going to track polar bears and interact directly with them on the sea ice. You see me there in a helicopter uh, entering observations into a tablet as we fly over that sea ice. That's kind of what the sea ice looks like. It's this uh, maze of, of floating uh, flows of ice that move all the time. The bears have to navigate that environment and we have to try to find the bears in that environment. And that can sometimes be a real challenge. No kidding. That seems incredibly challenging, but it also seems like pretty fun or pretty interesting. Do you have a favorite part about what you're doing up there? Oh, I think my favorite moment always is finding the bear <laughs> at the end of the day. You yeah. know, when you get down on the sea ice with a big polar bear, it's something really special. I feel very, very lucky to have the career that I do, that I get to interact with these really majestic and beautiful animals up close. Uh, so that's my favorite moment is that when we get close to these bears, I, I feel truly, truly lucky. Yeah, Nick, I, it's been 11 years since we were up in the Beaufort Sea studying polar bears together. Time flies, but yeah, such such a good time. Just briefly, could you give our viewers a little bit of context? We just saw the photos of you working on a big polar bear on the sea ice. How does that work? Is that polar bear sleeping or what's going on there and what are you doing to that bear just so the kids at home have a better idea 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, polar bears are a large carnivore and as such, they're a pretty dangerous animal to work with. So we have to be very safe when we work with them. And to do that, we actually tranquilize the bear from the air. And so the bear will go to sleep and they'll be asleep for about 45 minutes to an hour while we're able to work uh, with the bear in a safe condition like you see there. So the bears there right now are, are sleeping. Um, they're under a, a drug tranquilization that slowly wears off. And so we're able to go in and collect a few samples like hair, and claw, and a little bit of blood. You think of it like it's like a doctor's checkup for a polar bear. We're there to make sure that uh, they're healthy and we're getting all the information that we need to uh, understand about their biology. Thank you. And if you guys have any questions for Nick and his research, please let him know. Nick, real quickly, so when we do field work, our accommodations can vary widely depending on where we are, but yours look really nice. Where are you staying to do your research? Yeah, we, we're pretty lucky here. We're at the Churchill Northern Study Center. So this is a real epicenter of research for the subarctic. So we're quite a bit farther south than where Joanna was. Uh, we're down here in the Hudson Bay. It's one of the more southern regions where polar bears live. But there's also a lot of other species around here that live uh, close to the study center. And a lot of researchers come here to conduct that research. So it's actually, it's really nice. I'm in the library here at the uh, study center. So I can come in, I can read books, I can study up while we're waiting to fly out. Um, we even have this little dome on the top of the center where we can look at the northern lights when they show up. It's, it's a really uh, beautiful place to work out. It really is some of the best field accommodations anyone can have. And yeah, so Nick just mentioned the Northern Lights. If anyone's interested in learning more about them, it's kind of getting into the off season now. Uh, but through Explore.org, Polar Bears International partners with the Church of Northern Study Center to help stream live Northern Lights all winter. And of course, our live polar bear cams all fall in through the year. And that's what's on the screen behind me now are live highlights of our polar bear cams. So that's most active in the fall, of course, during the polar bear migration near Churchill, Manitoba. But there's really cool things you can see all year long on the explore.org website, especially around Churchill. So we do have some Cape cameras that are way out on the coast east of Churchill, uh, the Cape Churchill cameras, and they're always scanning. And there was a polar bear on there last week, a big male. And he probably just came to check check out the land a little bit and then left. Uh, we're not expecting polar bears really to come back on land in the Churchill area until the summer when the sea ice on Hudson Bay melts. As soon as there's no sea ice, they're back on land until the sea ice returns and then they're gone as fast as possible to go hunt some seals. So thank you so much to our scientists. So great to chat with you and see what you're doing. Uh, if you guys want to track bears or learn a little bit more about polar bears, especially in Hudson Bay, please check out the Polar Bears International Bear Tracker. So you can go on our website and see where polar bears are right now. And we ha are tracking multiple polar bears that either have GPS collars or ear tags on them. And you can see where all these different bears move all year round and it's updated weekly. It's very cool. And there's activities you can do in your classroom as well. Um, so if we can go back to, maybe I'll pull in um, Joanna real quick, if that's possible on the production side. We did get a couple questions. We've got a question from Mrs. Nystrom's class. Joanna, are there different kinds of polar bears or is there just the one type of polar bear? Yeah, it's a very nice question because polar bears do live all around the Arctic which, and um, they, even though they live vast distances from each other as subpopulations. They inhabit a similar ecosystem. They face a very fast changing environment like such as sea ice. They need to be an excellent swimmers and a very good walkers as Alyssa mentioned before. So that makes them quite similar in relation to each other. So we can talk about one polar bear or the polar bear that lives all around the Arctic. I love that. So thank you for the question. We have a couple more we're going to take before we wrap up. And I want to give a quick shout out. We currently have people viewing from California, Washington, Ohio, Montana, uh, Bremerton, Cornwall, UK. So from all over the place. Thank you, everyone. And we've had this question repeated a couple times. So I'll throw this one to Nick. Nick, how do you become a polar bear researcher? How did you get where you are right now? 
Well, the first thing you got to do is you got to love animals. I think that was uh, something that was with me from a child. I loved being outside uh, and I loved animals and, and interacting with them. But after that, it's, it's a lot of education. So, you know, if you're there right now in school and you're watching this and, you know, maybe you're grade five, grade six or something like that. Uh, well, once you get to grade 12, you finish your public education and then you have to go to university and then you got to finish your university education and get more advanced degrees. So by the time you're done with it, you get to about grade 23 or 24. You can think of it like that. Yeah. It takes a lot of schooling uh, to become a scientist because there's a lot to learn and a lot to train up and a lot of experience to gain. So that's the main thing is, is you got to like animals. You, you got to like school and, and like studying um, because there's a lot of it to become a scientist. It's a very rewarding field for sure. So, and it doesn't feel so much like school and work when you really love what you're doing. So yeah, if you're interested, I would definitely encourage anyone to check out the fields of biology or conservation. It'll only become more important in the coming decades, I'm sure. Uh, BJ, I'm gonna throw a question to you because you have a lot of experience with this one. How on earth do you get to the Arctic to even do this? I mean, it's a long ways away. It doesn't take a while to get up there and how do you, how do you get there? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good question. And places like where Joanna is right now and where Nick is, you know, these, these are places where scientists have traveled to study year after year because it's relatively easy to get there. And I say relatively easy because it's a lot easier than maybe some of the most remote places in the Arctic. Um, for Churchill, you could get there on a series of airplanes. You can even take a train to get to Churchill if you're patient. It's not a very fast train, but it's a scenic ride. Um, for Joanna being on in a group of islands, um, really the fastest way is probably by airplane out of Norway. But there are a few boats that make the trip. So if that's, uh, if that's something you like, that's an option as well. But most of these places are, you know, relatively easy to get to. If you were to try to study some of the most remote bears on the planet, you would have to be very, very patient and very creative to try to find where these bears are and how to get there by yourself and be able to survive. Creativity is the name of the game when it comes to Arctic research, for sure, especially, you know, when BJ's out in the field, by the time he gets there and he's out in the field, he always has a lot of problem solving to do. So you got to get creative. Uh, so I've got a question here from Arthur that I'll answer, and then one more from Ms. Carrillo's class that I will probably throw to Nick. Uh, but first, at, from Arthur, thank you for your question. How does a polar bear's sense of smell compare to a human's? Well, polar bears do have an amazing sense of smell. They've got these really long noses, that, and there's a lot of membranes in their nose that help pick up scent from the environment. You can imagine it's incredibly difficult to find prey out on the sea ice. The seals are swimming underwater. The seals can pop their heads up to take a breath of air through a, through a hole in the ice, or sometimes they can come rest on the ice. And a polar bear needs to be sniffing all the time to figure out where that smell is coming from. They can smell about a, a kilometer away, maybe a little more if the wind is right. They really do navigate by wind and by smells, trying to maximize all the different smells that get in their nose so they kind of know where to walk and look for food. So they can smell much, much better than we can. And if there's something like a dead rotting whale on the beach or something, that smells pretty good to a polar bear and they can find that smell from a long ways away. Humans probably don't want to go anywhere near that. Um, okay, Nick, I've got one last question to wrap us up. This is from Ms. Carrillo's class and they're asking, how heavy are polar bears? Oh, how heavy are polar bears? Well, polar bears uh, are interesting in the sense that we have what we call sexual dimorphism. That is that the females and the males are quite a bit different uh, from one another. So a female polar bear, you know, it, it's looking in around about uh, six, 700 pounds, something like that. Uh, where a male polar bear, you can get up over a thousand pounds, sometimes 1200 pounds. Uh, so they can become very, very big bears, almost double the size of an adult female. And, and that's really because the way that they've evolved over the years is that females, they, they keep their cubs uh, for two and a half years. And so the number of females that are available to mate is only about a third of the adult females are out there uh, available for a male. So it's about a three to one ratio. Lots of males, not a lot of females, pretty, pretty hard dating scene for if you're a male and you see what they're doing here, they're fighting. They're fighting for access to uh, females. And so being a big bear, means you're more likely to uh, get a date when you need it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. And that's a perfect segue into our wrap up here today. 
So again, big thank you to our scientists that joined us from the field. Today, we got to speak to Joanna in Svalbard, Norway, Nick in Churchill, Canada, and BJ and I at Polar Bears International, we went through our five favorite facts, which is that polar bears are the largest bears on the planet. They are the only ocean bear of all the eight bear species and the most carnivorous, so they eat the most meat and the fewest vegetables out of any other bear. They are the most mobile animal on four legs. They move the most and they get stinky feet to find each other out on the sea ice. Now there's lots more great facts about polar bears. Those are just some of our favorite. So please do check out our website, polarbearsinternational.org to learn more. We've got tons of resources on our page. And I did want to, again, big shout out to Earth Day tomorrow. There's lots of fabulous things going on all around us to celebrate our Earth and how amazing it is and how, how we can help protect it. And tomorrow, Disney Plus is premiering Polar Bear, a film they made in Svalbard, where Joanna is. And we are excited to help spread the word about this film. And so we would love to go out by showing you the trailer. So thank you so much for your time and your questions today. We'll end with the Disney Plus trailer. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Have a happy Earth Day. Thanks so much. Welcome to the Arctic, one of the harshest and most breathtaking places in the world. For this mother polar bear and her cubs, every day is an adventure. Every season brings new challenges, and danger can come from any direction. Somehow she must teach her cubs how to live and thrive in one of the world's most extreme environments. And if they're lucky, they'll pass down her secrets of survival to families of their own. invites you on an extraordinary journey of hope, resilience, and family. Disney Nature's Polar Bear, streaming April 22nd, only on Disney+. Plus.